they can't be quite full yet. We've got two more to go. This is gonna be great. Voot Yin joined the MDI Biological Laboratory in late 2010 as an assistant professor in the Davis Center for Regenerative Biology and Medicine following an American Heart Association postdoctoral fellowship at Duke University Medical Center. He is an expert in the field of cardiac and limb tissue regenerative biology, work that is increasingly critical to address the prevalence of cardiovascular diseases, the leading cause of mortality and morbidity in the Western world. Boots research program examines the process of tissue regeneration in animals that have perfected the process of tissue repair during evolution. Using this platform, he dissects the ge genetic basis for regeneration and applies this information toward designing therapies that restore regenerative responses in humans. Recently, his lab discovered that ZF143, a repurposed drug, enhances tissue regeneration of complex limb and heart tissues. This groundbreaking work led to the co-founding of Novo Biosciences, Inc., a regenerative medicine company devoted to accelerating our innate ability to heal with Dr. Kevin Strange. And Voot's title today is Humans Can Regenerate Missing Tissues, Fact or Fish Fiction? Okay, well, good afternoon, guys. So I want to take you to a world where amputees actually have the ability to regenerate missing tissues and where damaged organs can actually make themselves healthy once more. So the big question is, is this merely a fantasy or could it offer a possible glimpse into the future? So as a regeneration biologist, I truly believe in a world where we can dramatically enhance our innate ability to heal. So I'm willing to bet that most of us sitting here today have all been impacted by heart disease in one form or another. Now, if this is in fact the case, it's not really that surprising because this disease kills more people than all the cancers and AIDS combined in the entire world. And the reason why this is, is because the heart has a very poor ability to repair itself in the context of an injury. Now, I've been doing biomedical research for really the better part of the last 15 years. And from my days at Duke Medical Center to my current position at the MBI Biological Laboratory, I've really come to appreciate the amazing abilities of animals in nature. So there are animals out there that have the remarkable capacity to repair injured tissues on command. For example, here's a movie of a salamander regenerating its forelimb. Now, if you amputate this animal at the shoulder, it regenerates the entire arm. If you injure just the wrist, it only replaces the wrist. And it does this over and over again. This is a movie of the common aquarium fish known as the zebrafish regenerating its caudal fin or its tail. What is remarkable is that each frame that you're looking at represents only 24 hours of regenerative growth. So like the salamander, this animal here has to coordinate the replacement of bone, nerves, blood vessels, skin, and pigment cells. And it does so in a way so that the regenerated tissue is practically indistinguishable from the pre-injured state. Now these animals here, I think they're truly remarkable organisms. You could injure their brain, their spinal cord, their pancreas, their retina. We could even cut off a portion of their heart and these animals will seal the wound and regenerate the missing mass and induce complete recovery of heart function. So this begs the question now, if animals like salamanders and the zebrafish are so darn good at repairing things, why are we so bad at it? Why can't we repair our injured heart with the same mechanism that the zebrafish employs to heal its injured tissues? Well, perhaps we can. You see, what science has taught us is that the instruction manual, if you will, that is used by organisms like the zebrafish to heal the heart actually exists in each of us. In fact, this instruction manual is so fundamental that it's actually written in our own DNA. But it remains locked. So for reasons that we've yet to understand, these genetic programs are not activated in adults. 
What we want to do is unleash this regenerative potential. Well, in 2012, my research group identified a remarkable small compound. This compound has demonstrated the ability to reawaken these dormant genetic programs. We call this ZF143. So when we give injured zebrafish ZF143, what we see is absolute acceleration of the regenerative process. That is to say, animals with injured hearts, they're able to regenerate two to three times faster than their normal situation. Moreover, we can provide ZF143 in adult mice, and we can induce a heart attack in these adult mice, and animals treated with ZF143, they show a 65% improvement in heart function. That's the difference between being chained to an oxygen tank or being able to go out there and run in a road race. Will this work in humans? Well, I have no idea, but I'll tell you this. I'm incredibly optimistic because the program that allows an injured heart to be healed in the zebrafish, that same genetic program exists in each one of us sitting here today. So I do believe that with discoveries like ZF143, that world that I talked about can become a reality. Thank you. How much, I'm gonna jump in. Um, where are you at looking at this beyond mice? Are you past that at all? Yeah, so I, I'll tell you a, a couple of different things about this compound. What we're doing now is uh, we're moving into a pig model. And the reason why that's necessary is that the pig has a lot of similarities to humans, and the FDA would like us to test efficacy in the pig before it moves on to human trials. But one of the biggest things that derail drug development is that these compounds are absolutely toxic to humans. I already know that this compound is safe in humans. It's been tested for another indication. And it's been tested at a concentration that's either five or 50 times greater than what we're using in our regeneration studies. So to follow up on that, will the, will the FDA make you do it longer or shorter because of that? Shorter. Okay. Dan. We're working on that. <laughs> so, and, and the reason why is because we actually have some, um, some new data where we've injured the, the skeletal muscle or the leg muscle of an adult mouse. And we've actually found that it, that also stimulates sort of the regenerative cells at a much faster rate. And that's certainly caught the attention of the DOD. We named it ZF for zebrafish. It, it, it's, it's coded, that's, that's why. <laughs> you, you know, you'd be surprised how many times I get asked that question and there's really no good answer. <clears throat> so the, I think they die of old age. <clears throat> and the reason why is that these regenerative processes, I think they need to be stimulated in order to sort of replenish the entire organism. So one interesting study is that if you continuously injure the animal, let's say every month or every other month, can you in effect prolong the lifespan of the zebrafish? And that would be an interesting experiment. Yeah, the original purpose was actually uh, an anti-obesity compound. And the company that was pursuing that, interestingly, saw some efficacy through phase 1B trials, but the company folded because of lack of funds, which is unfortunate. But the good thing is, I have all that information, so. <laughs> what are the ethical concerns with doing the research on humans? That's a tough one. You know, so I, I'll tell you my, my approach to science, which is going to skirt that question. Um, 
I think there are animals out there that really have perfected solutions to a lot of the problems that we face in our society. And I think sometimes as scientists, we get, um, we get infatuated with our ability to be creative and intelligent. And my approach has always been to come to the realization that I am not smart enough to reinvent the wheel. So, you know, what I've always tried to do in my research program is to learn from animals, learn how they do it, and then take those lessons to apply, and then ultimately apply it to humans. So I try to stay from uh, experimenting on humans, and, and obviously until it's FDA trials to see the efficacy. Yeah, um, we do. Well, I'll tell you this. So we absolutely do, and all of the pathways that are being controlled by ZF-143, absolutely the same, fish, mouse, to human. And what it does is, I want you to imagine a wagon wheel. So a lot of the pathways that allow a cell to be proliferative or divide, they all feed into a central uh, component. We'll call that the hub of the wheel, if you will all these different signaling factors. And what ZF-143 does is it activates on that hub and allows all of the pro-proliferative factors to be amplified. I think we're gonna give him a break in the last 10 seconds. Thank you.